welcome to The Code Tray, the podcast of the ACCP Emergency Medicine PRN. I'm your host, Christian Kroll, an emergency medicine and ICU pharmacist at the University of Iowa Hospital and Clinics. To view this recorded presentation, head to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash at ACCP EMEDPRN. And for PRN members, slides can be found under the Libraries Entry section of the ACCP Communities website. So this is Dr. Madison Savage. She is also a PGY2 emergency medicine resident at the University of Maryland Medical Center. And today she's going to be telling us about the Journal Club comparing the cardiorespiratory safety of parenteral olanzapine and benzodiazepines to parenteral haloperidol slash droperidol and benzodiazepines in the emergency department patients. Okay, so to start off with a bit of background, severe agitation is a high risk medical condition associated with increased morbidity and mortality. Combination treatment with the parenteral antipsychotic and a parenteral benzodiazepine is preferred when verbal de-escalation and oral or sublingual administration are not feasible or ineffective. The American College of Emergency Physicians, or ACEP, recommends the combination of a typical antipsychotic and benzodiazepine with atypical antipsychotics such as olanzapine recommended as second line. And the FDA recommends against the use of parental olanzapine with a parental benzodiazepine. So I do want to include a brief knowledge check question for everyone. So which is a concern with co-administration of a lansipine and a benzodiazepine? A, excessive sedation, B, cardiorespiratory depression, D, C, death, or D, all of the above. Concomitant administration of parenteral olanzapine and a parenteral benzodiazepine is not recommended due to the potential for excessive sedation, cardiorespiratory depression, and death. The FDA warning regarding this is based on a post-marketing evaluation of 29 fatal adverse events involving injectable olanzapine, with 51.7% of those also receiving a benzodiazepine. However, 25 out of 29 patients received other sedating medications, and the majority of fatalities occurred more than 12 hours following the last dose of olanzapine. So as for previous literature before talking about our study today, Wilson and colleagues was a retrospective chart review published in 2012 that compared the safety of olanzapine and haloperidol in combination with benzodiazepines in emergency department patients with acute agitation. Primary outcomes of this study included medication effect on vital signs, patient alcohol levels, reduction in agitation, and directly measured by additional medication intervention within three hours, decrease in oxygen saturation as measured from the patient's baseline, and any episodes of hypoxia. Secondary outcomes included reductions in both systolic and diastolic blood pressure. Moving on to the intervention, the study compared patients who received parenteral haloperidol with or without a benzodiazepine to a previous analysis of patients who received olanzapine with or without benzodiazepines. Data collection for patients receiving olanzapine was conducted in exactly the same way as described for haloperidol and was conducted during the same study period. For results, 39 patients received haloperidol plus a benzodiazepine, and 32 patients received haloperidol alone. 10 patients received olanzapine plus a benzodiazepine, and 15 patients received olanzapine alone. Alcohol-positive patients who received haloperidol plus a benzodiazepine had a larger drop in blood pressure compared to those who received olanzapine plus a benzodiazepine, although this difference was not statistically significant. Aside from this, 0% of patients in the olanzapine and benzodiazepine group experienced hypotension, compared to 6.7% of patients receiving olanzapine alone. Additionally, alcohol-positive patients who received olanzapine plus a benzodiazepine had greater drops in oxygen saturations compared to patients who received haloperidol plus a benzodiazepine, which was also not significant. And all other outcomes were similar between groups in the study. The author of the study concluded that the, that the combination of olanzapine plus benzodiazepines was not associated with hypotension. If an agitated patient is suspected of having recently ingested large amounts of alcohol, caution should be exercised when administering intramuscular olanzapine plus benzodiazepines. This next study was published in 2013 and was a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled, double-dummy clinical trial conducted in three emergency departments from August of 2009 to March of 2011. This study assessed intravenous droperidol or olanzapine as an adjunct to midazolam. The primary outcome of this study was time to sedation. 
and secondary outcomes included the need for rescue therapy and patients unresponsive to initial treatment for agitation, as well as adverse events, specifically the prevalence of airway obstruction, oxygen desaturation, hypotension, arrhythmias, and decrease in glass calcoma scale. For, as for intervention, patients were randomized to receive a saline solution, which was the control, Triperidol 5 milligrams or olanzapine 5 milligram bolus. This was immediately followed by incremental midazolam boluses of 2.5 or 5 milligrams until sedation was achieved. As for results, 336 patients were randomized to three different treatment groups. The times to adequate sedation were significantly shorter for the olanzapine and droperidol groups than that for the control group. The mean time to sedation in the droperidol group was 21.3 minutes compared to 14 minutes in the olanzapine group, respectively. Additionally, the groups did not differ in the proportion of patients who required additional parenteral sedating drugs. The numbers of patients who experienced adverse events were similar among the groups, with oxygen desaturation being the most prevalent adverse event. And lastly, 2.8% of patients receiving olanzapine and a benzodiazepine experienced hypotension, compared to 3.6% when administered droperidol and a benzodiazepine. The author of the study concluded that the administration of intravenous droperidol or olanzapine as a bolus adjunct to intravenous midazolam is efficacious and safe and provides more rapid sedation for acutely agitated patients in the emergency department compared with intravenous midazolam monotherapy. The final study I would like to discuss before reviewing our study today was published in 2024 and aimed to reevaluate the risk of cardiorespiratory depression with concomitant parental olanzapine and parental benzodiazepine administration. This was a single center retrospective cohort study conducted in an urban emergency department from January 2017 through November of 2019. The primary outcome of this study was tracheal intubation in the emergency department. Secondary outcomes include hypotension defined as systolic blood pressure of less than 90 millimeters of mercury and hypoxemia defined as an SpO2 of less than 90%. As for intervention, patients were included if they received two total medication doses co-administered within 60 minutes, either olanzapine plus a benzodiazepine or two doses of olanzapine. For results, 549 patients received two doses of olanzapine and 144 patients received olanzapine plus a benzodiazepine. There was no significant difference found in intubation rates between groups. And rates of hypotension, which was found to be 9% in both groups, and hypoxemia were also not significantly different between groups. In conclusion, this study found that there is no difference in prevalence of cardiorespiratory depression in those receiving only olanzapine versus olanzapine plus a benzodiazepine. Now moving on to the article I will be discussing today, comparing the cardiorespiratory safety of parental olanzapine and benzodiazepines to parental haloperidol or droperidol and benzodiazepines in emergency department patients. The study aimed to assess the cardiorespiratory safety of parental olanzapine and benzodiazepine combination treatment compared to parenteral droperidol or haloperidol and benzodiazepine combination treatment. As for study design, this was a retrospective chart review conducted in the adult emergency department at a single academic medical center. Patients were identified via an electronic, electronic medical record inquiry of emergency department orders for parenteral olanzapine, haloperidol, and droperidol from January 1st, 2021 to January 9th of 2024. Patients were included if they were 18 years of age or older, and if they received intramuscular or intravenous droperidol, haloperidol, or olanzapine within one hour of an intramuscular or intravenous benzodiazepine. Patients were excluded if they received multiple IM or IV antipsychotics prior to the administration of IM or IV droperidol, haloperidol, or olanzapine in combination with an IM IV benzodiazepine. If no vital signs were recorded before or within four hours after treatment, if there was no weight recorded, and if they were on a long-acting injectable antipsychotic prior to admission. Moving on to the interventions, this study compared the respiratory effects of IMIV olanzapine plus an IMIV benzodiazepine to IMIV haloperidol or droperidol plus an IMIV benzodiazepine. All antipsychotic medications were converted to olanzapine dose equivalents, and all benzodiazepines were converted to lorazepam dose equivalents. 10 milligrams of olanzapine was considered equivalent to haloperidol 8 milligrams and droperidol 2.5 milligrams, and 1 milligram of lorazepam was considered equivalent to midazolam 2 milligrams and diazepam 5 milligrams. Moving on to the outcomes of this study, the primary outcome was change in systolic blood pressure before and within four hours following combination treatment. 
Recombination treatment vitals were defined as the closest vitals before combination treatment. If multiple vitals were recorded, the lowest systolic blood pressure was identified and the vitals associated with that blood pressure were collected. Secondary outcomes included the percent change in systolic blood pressure within four hours after combination treatment. Hypertension defines the systolic blood pressure of less than 90 millimeters of mercury within four hours of combination treatment. Increase from baseline oxygen requirements within four hours after combination treatment. And the need for intubation due to cardiorespiratory depression within four hours after combination treatment. As for statistical analysis, the authors of the study estimated that a total of 40 patients treated with IMIV olanzapine and an IMIV benzodiazepine, and 40 patients treated with IMIV droperidol or haloperidol and an IMIV benzodiazepine would be needed to detect a 20% pre post change in systolic blood pressure with a standard deviation of 30 millimeters of mercury, 5% alpha, and 95% power. One to one propensity score matching was performed with scores generated via logistic regression based on age, weight, lanzapine dose equivalence, antipsychotic route administration, lorazepam dose equivalence, benzodiazepine route of administration, and pre combination treatments to solid blood pressure greater than 120 millimeters of mercury. That analysis was presented using descriptive statistics. Additionally, categorical variables were compared using the chi square or Fisher's exact test. Paired continuous variables were compared using the Wilcoxon signed rank test, whereas non paired continuous variables were compared using the Manwood AV test. Now moving on to the results. The total of 1,614 orders for parental olanzapine, haloperidol, or droperidol were reviewed, and 138 patients met inclusion criteria. After propensity score matching, 96 patients were included in the final study cohort, with 48 receiving IMIV olanzapine in combination with the benzodiazepine and 48 receiving IM or IV haloperidol or droperidol in combination with the benzodiazepine. As for patient demographics, there were no statistically significant differences in age, gender, weight, or past medical history of cardiovascular or respiratory disease. Additionally, most patients in both groups presented with a chief complaint of agitation or for a psychiatric evaluation. Baseline systolic blood pressure, pre-combination treatment systolic blood pressure of greater than 120 millimeters of mercury, baseline oxygen requirements, and time between combination treatment and post-combination treatment vitals were comparable between groups. Of note, positive blood alcohol results were not significantly different between groups, but there were numerically more positive results in those treated with droperidol or haloperidol in combination with the benzodiazepine. This table displays the treatment information specific to each treatment group. Most patients in the IMIV droperidol haloperidol group were administered haloperidol. In addition, as for the benzodiazepine agents, more patients in the IMIV olanzapine group received combination treatment with IMIV midazolam, which was statistically significant. Time between antipsychotic and benzodiazepine administration was statistically shorter in the IMIV droperidol haloperidol group, with a median of zero minutes between medications being administered, compared to 22 minutes in the olanzapine group. Furthermore, the olanzapine plus benzodiazepine group had numerically more additional benzodiazepine and non-benzodiazepine sedatives administered, while the group given IM, IV, droperidol, or haloperidol with the benzodiazepine had numerically more diphenhydramine administered. As for the primary outcomes, systolic blood pressure decreased following both IM, IV, olanzapine and IM, IV, droperidol, or haloperidol use in combination with an IM, IV, benzodiazepine. As for secondary outcomes, both groups had similar percent systolic blood pressure de de decreases within four hours post-combination treatment, as well as similar frequencies of hypotension. Of note, although no patients were intubated due to respiratory depression, two patients were intubated for severe agitation refractory to aggressive treatment. If those patients were excluded, the between-group difference for escalation and post-combination treatment oxygen requirements would decrease. Based on the results of this study, the authors concluded that parental olanzapine in combination with the parental benzodiazepine may have comparable cardiorespiratory safety versus parental droperidol or haloperidol in combination with the parental benzodiazepine when treating agitation in the adult emergency department. Now moving on to the identified strengths and limitations of the study. As for strengths, the study directly compared clinically relevant regimens for the management of acute agitation in the emergency department which reflects real-world pra practice and addresses a key area of clinical uncertainty. Baseline demographics were similar between groups, with primarily younger adults included. 
Additionally, the study design and statistical analysis utilizing one-to-one -one propensity score matching was appropriate. The objective cardiorespiratory safety endpoints, including changes in blood pressure, prevalence of hypotension, and increase from baseline oxygen requirements were clinically meaningful measures and reduced the risk of subjective bias. Lastly, medication dosing was not significantly different between groups, and clinically validated methods were used to determine dosing equivalence. As for limitations of the study, the retrospective design conducted in a single center emergency department affects external validity. But this result solely relied on chart review as well as consistent documentation by nurses. Additionally, alternative reasons for hypotension cannot be excluded. Patient comorbidities, urine toxicology results, and medications administered but not collected in the study, such as medications administered via emergency medical services, may have also affected the prevalence of hypotension. Blood alcohol levels and urine toxicology results were not available for all patients. And lastly, there was variation in the timing of pre and post combination treatment vitals. Moving on to my conclusions for this study, the significant difference in time to combination treatment administration stood out to me with a median of zero minutes in droperidol haloperidol plus a benzodiazepine group compared to 22 minutes in the olanzapine plus a benzodiazepine group. In the setting of drug shortages, for example, my institution experienced a droperidol shortage last year, it may be worthwhile to increase over overall comfortability with the olanzapine benzodiazepine combination. Based on previous literature and the study I discussed today, I would feel comfortable recommending olanzapine to be administered with, with a benzodiazepine 30 minutes apart in the emergency department. However, it may be reasonable to recommend an alternative regimen in patients with certain comorbidities or for those who are hypotensive prior to medication administration. And out of caution, lower doses of concomitant selective agents can be considered, for example, starting with a 5 milligram dose of olanzapine instead of 10 milligrams. And here are my references. And this concludes my presentation. Thank you for your time, and I'd be happy to take any questions. If you have enjoyed this presentation content and would like to hear more, subscribe via your favorite podcasting app. Additionally, make sure to check out our YouTube page for all recorded presentations. Thank you for listening to this week's ACCP Emergency Medicine Journal Club presentation. Join us weekly for review and discussion of new journal articles in emergency medicine. This podcast provides general information only and does not offer individualized medical or professional health care services, including pharmaceutical advice. The contents and materials in the podcast are not intended to be a substitute for inpatient pharmaceutical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. And the use of the contents and materials in the podcast does not constitute a pharmacist-patient relationship. As a result, the information in and materials linked to this podcast are applied at the user or patient's own risk. Users or patients should consult their physician or personal health care professional. The user or patient should not ignore or delay seeking care because of something they heard on this podcast. In case of an emergency, the user or patient should contact their physician, call 911, or go to the nearest medical emergency facility. The views and statements expressed on this podcast are those of the host and guest, and should not be interpreted to reflect the official position or policy of ACCP or the Emergency Medicine PRN.